To begin the term, we're going to think in terms of genre. That just means a class of writing that shares a core common set of characteristics. In particular, we're thinking about the literary genres of poetry, drama, and fiction in this class, and we'll be reading lots of examples of each one. In this lecture, we're just going to think about the idea of genre itself, why that's important, and start to examine some of the basic features of each of these main literary genres that we will be studying. So why study literature and consider genre as a primary way of understanding these texts? Well, each genre creates certain expectations in a reader and follows certain attributes, inventions, that help us understand the text, or at least have a starting framework for understanding a text. Encountering a work of poetry compared to a work of fiction, compared to a work of drama, can be a very different experience as a reader. So we can help ourselves by understanding the genre and identifying that first, and then having those appropriate expectations of the text. It also lets us understand when a text is violating genre conventions, and that can be equally important. So let's start with some basic definitions to help orient ourselves in this world of genre analysis. Fiction is probably the most common type of writing that you've been exposed to. Fiction texts are typically organized just in normal paragraphs. The writing goes all the way to the end of the page and there are, only, there are no line breaks within sentences, uh, but content is measured in units of sentences and paragraphs. We'll talk a lot more about some of the other distinctive characteristics of fiction as we delve into some of the other elements of this unit, but fiction is easily recognizable by the way it looks on a page just happening in paragraphs, and obviously it has imaginary settings and characters and stories. Poetry, on the other hand, is written in verse, and again, instantly recognizable when you look on the page because of the line breaks. Uh, so in other words, the text does not go all the way to the right margin, but, the, but there are breaks in lines of text and sentences are broken up even. Now there can be some different types of line breaks, uh, some that fall on grammatical units and some that break them and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we get into some of the more detailed characteristics of poetry. But it is written in a style called verse, it's written in lines and those lines are broken. And one of the typical units for organizing poems, aside from lines, is in stanzas, and that's a collection of lines. It's separated by white space from other parts of the poem. Some poems are just a single stanza, but in poems with multiple stanzas, that is a really useful unit for helping to see where you are in the text and for identifying where you are in a text. These two types, fiction and poetry, are meant to be read. That's the format in which these texts exist, and how they're meant to be encountered. Drama, on the other hand, while it starts as a written text, is meant to be performed, and that's one of the key differences between this genre and others. Now, of course, we're gonna engage with drama in, in both those ways, in reading, and a little bit later on, you will actually um, see some performed dramas as well. As you think about the written drama, that form is also quite identifiable, even just looking at a page of text. A drama will have dialogue by characters, and that's announced with character names, usually a colon, and then the lines of dialogue that they would speak. And interspersed are stage directions that help the actors understand how to say those lines or give the director some instructions about how the set should look or how people should be dressed in the play. And those are the basic elements that you see when reading a drama that's written on the page. You'll see those stage directions, you'll see, and you'll see dialogue, and again, some other stage directions interspersed throughout the play. The last term that I wanna cover as we just start off by thinking through genre as a way of understanding texts and understanding some key expectations to have is the idea of narrative. A narrative is just a story element in a text. It doesn't have to be a fully formed plot, and we'll talk in detail in the, in the plot part of this unit um, about that. But the narrative is, is a, a characteristic that any type of text, poetry, fiction, drama can have, simply refers to that notion of the story. So we definitely want to use that as a way to start to get into these texts and to analyze them, even as we're thinking through the uh, genre, the format that they have, 
we also want to start thinking about the content and the story that they tell.